You know, guys, one thing that I think hurts a lot of gamblers out there and a lot of handicappers in this business as well is what I call paralysis through overanalysis. And case in point, last night's game with New England and Kansas City. I didn't care if that line was 12, 14, 16, what did it go off? 17 and a half. It could have been 22. There was only one way to play that game. You either walk with the Patriots or you walked away from the game. No ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, what? Was Kansas City going to suddenly show up on the road with a journeyman quarterback, Tyler Palco, a guy who couldn't cut it in the UFL, couldn't cut it in the CFL, and was making his first ever NFL start? This wasn't like a highly touted rookie first rounder, okay? This was a journeyman quarterback making a start for a team that had scored 13 total points in its previous two games combined and now suddenly was going to find itself on the road in Foxborough last night against the Patriots team that, you know, has occasionally put points on the board. You know, like I said about this game yesterday and the email I sent out here on the Daily Video Report on the site as well, every single game is a 50-50 betting opportunity. You know, sometimes you just look at a game and you go, eh, I got to play the Patriots. That's what I did last night. Now, I know a lot of the handicappers at the site shied away from this game. A few of them actually came with Kansas City. Most of the guys instead went into college basketball, and I think all but two or three handicappers had winning days on Monday. But again, you know, I rode the Patriots. It's just like the game two Mondays ago with Green Bay at home against Minnesota after the Packers had struggled on the road to hold off San Diego, a Minnesota team coming in there with the rookie quarterback. You knew the Packers were going to win. Again, you either walk with the Packers and walk with the Patriots in those two particular games laying the big number or you just walk away from the game. And you know what? Still, it always comes down to a 50-50 proposition. But a lot of times, guys try to dissuade themselves from laying the points. They try to talk themselves into the other side, even though their first inclination is probably, like 99% of the betting public, to gravitate toward the favorite, especially if it's a home chalk. That's why I say it's paralysis by overanalysis. Sometimes you just look at the card, and that's what I do, guys. I look at the card, I immediately check off the games I like, and then I'll go do my research. But very, very, very few times. Well, after I later in the week, I suddenly go, oh, man, I should add this game to the, the docket. I mean, you know, sometimes you don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill when it comes to betting games. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here. This is going to be your Tuesday video report. Uh, I have a $15 off money-saving coupon code that will come your way in just a moment, plus a fourth straight college basketball uh, free winner after giving you Massachusetts. How easy was that one last night? I mean, that was a case in point. The free pick last night, Massachusetts. Team with more returning starters, team with better depth, in revenge after getting losing last year at home to Boston College, in revenge against an inexperienced Boston College team. Who cared that the game was on the road? Just bet Massachusetts and never look back. So you mass won another free pick coming your way in just a moment. Now tonight there is a college football game. It is of course in the Mid-American Conference. It is Miami of Ohio and Ohio. If you think I'm going to have a pick on that game, you are sorely mistaken because as far as I'm concerned, the Mid-American Conference can close up shop and go away. I have no interest in picking any more of their stupid weeknight games. Conference USA, I got no problems with you. Mid-American Conference, you are on the you-know-what list out of here could care less. Plus, how many times have I said to you that the opening weeks of the season, no matter the sport, you always have the advantage over the odds makers, never more so than in preseason football in August and the opening month to play in college basketball. And the reason, as I told you before, you find soft numbers. Yes, you find soft numbers. You realize what a task it is, and not that I'm sticking up for line makers here, but you realize what a task it is for odds makers to try to come up with accurate numbers for college basketball teams when they don't really know what most of these teams have. Hell, most of the coaches don't know what they have in terms of the talent they're going to be able to put on the floor, the chemistry, meshing returning starters with incoming freshmen and sophomore that are going to see significant playing time. And their sole focus, the line makers I'm speaking of, it's the NFL and college football because that's where all the betting action is. So, as I always like to say, you gravitate the most where the odds makers concentrate the least, and that's where you'll find your soft numbers. I think I've proven that. I'm already 3-0 and with my college basketball releases so far this season. Hitting my opening game of the year, now 13-4-1 and with that play the past 18 years with uh, North Carolina over Michigan State two Fridays ago in that Carrier Classic outside of San Diego. Then last Tuesday night, 10-dime winner with Kentucky laying 2.5 and a 10-point win over Kansas. And then 
and Friday night, this past Friday night, hitting my 15 dime revenge game of the year, Alabama laying a two, two and a half points uh, by 10 over Wichita State. So I'm 3 0 in college basketball, including 2 0 with 15 dime releases, and I've won four straight college basketball free selections over the past week for you. Tonight, 15 dime opening tournament game of the year selection. 15 dime opening tournament game of the year play. It's on your contest between Missouri and California. Now, that is in the, uh, oh, something they call the SBC Classic out in uh, Kansas City. Um, again, it is a game that I think is the best bet on tonight's card in here. Uh, California number 20 in the nation. Missouri number 21 in the nation. Both of these teams 4-0. Both of them coming off uh, double-digit blowout wins last night. Missouri rolling 87-58 over Notre Dame. Meanwhile, California took care of business and took Georgia out to the woodshed. Uh, I think that one was 70-46, uh, to 46, the final score there. Uh, pretty close line. You know, it's a one to one and a half point spread here, uh, depending on where you're shopping it out. Again, I think it's the best bet on the board tonight. Uh, those 15 dime plays may not sound like a big rating, but for those of you that newcomers, let me just repeat what I always say. For those of you that are regular followers, please forgive me for repeating this, but you have to. 15 dime plays are right there. My bread and butter plays at the top of my rating scale since 99% of my plays are rated between 5, 10, and 15 dime releases. And those 15 dime plays dating back to the start of the NFL preseason and pro football, college football, and now in college basketball combined, 25 and 12, winning 10 of the last 13. That's the best bet on tonight's card as I look to kick off a fourth straight winning week. 15 dime release again, Missouri and California. It's a late night game, guys. It goes at 10 o'clock Eastern. Now, listen, if you're looking for somebody with a bead on this Mid American Conference game between Ohio and Miami of Ohio, might want to check out Dom Chambers, who's going for winning day number 11 out of 15 with his 50 dime winner number six in a row on this college football contest. Just as strong as his 50 dime winner on Kansas State outright at Texas on Saturday. Just as strong as his 50 dime winner on the Broncos outright over the Jets last Thursday. And of course, in between there, Dom also hit a Monster 80 dime Sunday night bailout game of the year play. Eagles out right over the Giants. Dog or favorite? Which way does it go? Check it out for Dom Chambers. Listen, guys, your money saving discount coupon code is going to be November 22nd. November 22nd. That will earn you $15 off. Uh, any single purchase you make today, you don't necessarily have to buy my play. Uh, you can buy any ones at the site. Once again, you enter November 22nd. That's November and the number 22nd. No space between them, and that will uh, earn you uh, your $15 uh, discount coupon. Uh, you enter that in the pro shopping cart when prompted, and you'll save $15 off. Uh, your money saving... Oh, hey, guys, real quick. I want to tell you, how did the... Uh the fantasy football go this week with uh, draftstreet.com. We ran kind of a different contest this week. It was one where you had a limited contest available to only 100 players. Uh, first place won by a guy, user named P. Peterson, 150.22 points. Yeah, nice quarterback combos there, guys. Matthew Stafford, five touchdown passes, and you still won, despite the fact that Vince Young threw three interceptions, but uh, also had Michael Bush in there. Uh, really nice uh, performance by his team. He won the contest by less than one point over a guy whose username was Monitor Tan, who had 149.38 points. Uh, first place was worth $300. The top nine finished in the money. Uh, contest every single day, guys, over at DraftStreet.com. And FYI, after finishing like 237th and 139th the previous two weeks, yours truly fourth in the league. Matter of fact, I only, uh, let's see, I only lost out by uh, two and a half points out of first place from winning it. So uh, remember, DraftStreet.com, this week it's going back to a free uh, entry at DraftStreet.com. You use my last name, DeMarco, and uh, I've got $300 of my money up at, for grabs. The top seven finish in the money uh, at DraftStreet.com. And of course, you've got till one o'clock Sunday to finalize your rosters. Okay, your free pick tonight, guys. I like Kent in revenge against Cleveland State. Kent playing at home, in case you're at uh, on Jeopardy this week. Uh, they're at the MAC Center, the MAC Center. That's where the Golden Flashes play their home games. Listen, last year at Cleveland State, Kent was up 16 points in the second half, and they managed to lose the game 69-66. Caused the Vikings, that's Cleveland State's nickname, again, if in case you have to be on Jeopardy, uh, went to a very aggressive uh, trapping zone defense in the second half of the game. And Kent's young guards at the time couldn't handle the pressure. Well, this is a more mature Kent team. Uh, four starters back. Nine significant players that saw action last year back for the Golden Flashes. That's not to say Cleveland State isn't experience as well. They've got four starters back as well, but 
The one guy they lost is Norris Cole, who averaged 16 points a game last year. And, of course, uh, their point guard was the number one draft pick, of a number first-round draft pick of the Miami Heat. You remember the NBA, don't you? We won't in a couple of months, so will we? Uh, anyway, I like Kent in this particular game here. Uh, you know, the irony here is also Gary Waters, the Cleveland State head coach, uh, used to be the head coach of Kent from 96 to 01. Uh, both teams have big road wins so far this year. Uh, Cleveland State upsetting Vanderbilt in Nashville and Kent uh, winning in Morgantown against West Virginia. But again, I like the spread in this game. It was five and a half overnight and early this morning. Uh, it has come down nearly by half that margin as well. Um, and I'm going to go with Kent in revenge, just like I went with UMass in revenge last night. Uh, Kent is going to be the play in this one. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again on Wednesday.